So now we're going to learn about pointers in Go. And uh, we've already seen what a pointer is. And a pointer is just like pointing to some location in memory where a value is stored. And so memory in a computer is like, I've already explained this before, but I'll just say it again briefly. It's like a post office with a bunch of P.O. boxes. And each of those P.O. boxes has an address. And you could store things in each of those, each one of those little P.O. boxes. You could store a value in each one of those P.O. boxes. And the value, you know, that you stored in that P.O. box, that P.O. box will have a memory address. will have an address. Same deal in programming, right? That's kind of like the way memory works. It's just a whole bunch of different little slots, little cubby holes, a little post off, a li bunch of little post office boxes, where you could store stuff. And every slot, cubby hole, post office box, whatever word you use, has an address. And so the easiest way to see this is just to create a variable, a colon equal forty two, and then for print line. Let's print out that variable, and uh, and when we run that. We've got the value both times, but if we use this ampersand right here. So that ampersand operator, and that's an operator. So if we go look at the Golang spec, and we look at the language specification, and look at the operators, down here under the operators we have, one of the operators is that right there. Just give me the address. That's how you see the address in memory. So now when I run this, this is the address in memory where that value is stored, right? That's the address in memory where that value is stored. So that's one operator that we have to use to see the address is the ampersand. And so just burn that into your memory right now. You know, here is the value and what is the address? And what is the address? <laughs> so use the ampersand, which also means and, and it's just like that phrase, and what is the address? So you put the ampersand and it shows you the address. So we could take that and we could also look to see some interesting stuff. So I'm going to copy all that and I'm going to change these to printfs. And we'll do percent %t here. And a new line and we'll pass in a. I'm just going to copy that one and that'll be easier just to change that part and then get rid of this part. All right, so now if we take a look at this, the first one gives us the value and the address. Now we wanna see the type of that value and the type of that address. And if we look at that, we see that the type of the value is an int, and that totally makes sense, but the type of the address is a pointer to an int, a pointer to an int. And this is a completely separate type than this. These are two different types, just like a string and an int, two different types, or a bool and an int, two different types, an int and a pointer to an int, two different types. You can't mix and match them. This is static programming, two very separate, distinct types. This star right here is part of the type. So that's a pointer to an int. And that makes sense because here's the address and at, at that address, an int is stored. So we're pointing to a location where an int is stored. It's a pointer to an int. So you've got two things to remember. You have the ampersand, which gives you the address where a value is stored. And then when you are talking about that address for the, where the value is stored, that is going to be a pointer to an int, a pointer to where an int is stored. So a pointer to an int. And that is its own type. So if we had var b int, we could not assign the address to it. We could not do that. That's not gonna work. It's gonna tell us, cannot use ampersand a, ampersand a, which is type pointer to an int, as type int in assignment. We can't do that. If this was a pointer to an int, no problem. But then we'll get an error that we didn't use b. So if we print out b, just take a look at it, we'll be able to see that that is the exact same address. So this is kind of interesting. Everything in Go is passed by value. I've said that before, right? But now we're able to share addresses. We could say, hey, here's an address. This is an address where a value is stored. That's kind of cool. All right, so the main thing I wanted to illustrate there was that we can't assign a pointer to an int. We can't assign a pointer to an int to an int. Can't assign a pointer to an int to an int. They're two different types. So this is the int. This is the pointer to the int. I'm gonna take b and I'm gonna do a colon equal 
and uh, and I'm going to assign A to it. So that's pretty much what I had before, but just a uh, short declaration operator instead. So now B is that address. What if I wanted to see the value stored at that address? There's one more operator that I can use, and that's this, at the asterisk. And so if we come in here and look at the language specification, we see that the asterisk is also an operator. This asterisk right here is an operator. This asterisk right here is part of the type. Two different things completely. So it's the same lexical element, the same symbol, but they're used in two different ways. When you see this asterisk with a type, that is a pointer to that type, a pointer to an int. It's a pointer to where an int is stored, okay? So when you see that asterisk there, pointer to an int. When you see it like this, I am dereferencing an address. So when I have an address, I could put another asterisk in front of it, and that's an operator, and that's going to dereference that address. What's that mean? Kabam, 42. It gave me the value that is stored at that address. So this asterisk gives me the value stored at an address. Cool. You got a couple of things that you're remembering right now that you're learning. Ampersand gives us an address, right? And uh, with an address, that becomes a pointer to an int or a pointer to the type which is stored at that address, right? That's the value. So we have an int, which is one type, and we have a pointer to where an int is stored, pointer to an int. That's a completely different type. So we could take an address, we can get an address. So I'm taking the address here. And once we have the address, which I've assigned to B, and we could see that right there, we could dereference that address and see the value stored there. So we could get the address with the ampersand, and once we have the address, we could get the value with the asterisk. Check this out, we could even do this. Give me the address of where a, the value stored at A, so that's 42, give me the address there, and then dereference it. And then dereference it. I have no idea why, whoops, I have no idea why that just deleted that star. And then dereference it, run it. Waiting for remote server. Come on, remote server, air communicating. Let's run it again. Cool. And so this last line right here, it gave me the address, and then it gave me the value stored at the address. So ampersand gives you the address, and asterisk gives you the value stored at an address. When you have when you have the address, right? You are, you have the address, and you want the value stored there. Gives you the value stored w at, at an address when you have the address, right? That's what that asterisk does. So that's it. <laughs> that's it. Those are pointers, and it's just uh, you store value in memory wherever that value is stored in the compiler. The computer just does that for you. You could see that address if you have that address, like right here. You could then dereference that address and you could get the value. And if I wanted to, right, because right now, uh, format print line B and the address is stored there, I could take ampersand, I could take uh, asterisk B and I could set that equal to 43. So here's the address and at that address, the value, the value at that address, assign it to 43 and then watch this. And I print out A, and this A is now going to be equal to 43. Whoa. So why is A equal to 43? Because A is stored at a certain address, and I got that address right here and assigned it to B, and then B is the address, right? It's pointing to the address where a value is stored. I said, give me that value, set it equal to 43, and then print that value at that address. Like A... A is point A is A is like the value stored at an address, and B is that address, and I said that value there, change it to this. And so A and B are both talking about the same post office box and dealing with the same values stored in that post office box, that memory address. All right, so just a little bit of a review. You take an address by putting the ampersand in front of you know, a value. <laughs> and what's your address? And all you do is do the ampersand. And when you have an address, you can dereference that and say, give me the value, give me the value of 
you know, what's at this address. Give me the value of what's at this address. Let me zoom in on that so you can see it. Give me the value of what's at this address. That's dereferencing, dereferencing. And then uh, you could also do this, like the value at that address, set it equal to this. And, uh, and then the last thing, which is good to know about, was here we have an int and we have a pointer to an int. Those are two different types, right? And a pointer to an int, this asterisk is part of the type, but this is an operator, right? When you have an address, that's an operator. And a pointer to an int just means that this is an address where an int is stored. We're pointing to an address where an int is stored. That's a pointer to an int. So there's a little bit of information, but all you gotta remember is ampersand to get the address, asterisk as an operator to dereference an address and get to the value that's stored at a certain location, a certain address, and that when you have an address, the type of that is a pointer to whatever value type is stored, whatever type of the value is that's stored in that address. So here we have a pointer to an int, and that's part of the type. I hope that makes sense. If it's the first time you're coming to pointers, that might be a little bit like, uh, whoa, that was a lot. <laughs> Just rewatch this, re this video and hand code some of this out yourself. I put a couple of steps with explanation, explanations in right here, and you can walk through those, and I'll uh, also put in code from video, right? Code from video will go right there. So I'll go get this code from the video, make sure it's all well formatted, and I'll put that right there so you can check out that code from the video. All right, so that's what a pointer is, and uh, in the next couple of videos, maybe, yeah, we are going to work with them a little bit, and we'll see some of that in action. We'll talk about where to use them, too. Those are pointers. They're pretty cool.